Hi, I'm Brandy. This is Reason Web Homestead, and today we're going over water soluble calcium. Now, also, we're going to be making water soluble calcium phosphate. Ignore the hecklers in the back. So, what you're going to need for this is um, dried eggshells. So, what I do is I take my eggs, shells, uh, put them in the oven for a couple hours. What you want is to get that membrane gone from the inside of the egg and make it so they are crunchy, 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 crunchable. And then what else was right there? You need a mason jar. Now, the size of the mason jar uh, will depend on how much you want to make. Uh, for my garden, for the calcium, I made just a small little jar. Um, but you can go big and get a big mason jar because you can use this water soluble phosphate in more than just your garden. So here's what you need as well is some good vinegar. This is apple cider vinegar with the mother. Uh, I would not recommend just white vinegar. You want a fermented type of vinegar, brown rice vinegar, apple cider vinegar, uh, something good. Here in Eastern Kentucky, I can't find brown rice vinegar, so that's why I went with apple cider vinegar with the mother. Now, why do we want to use this water-soluble calcium? So here in Eastern Kentucky, it has been raining a ton and it's supposed to rain all week. And so what that can do is deplete the nutrients from your garden. And calcium is a very important nutrient and that uh, a lack of calcium in your garden will lead to blossom and rot in your tomatoes, your peppers, your squash maybe. And so we want to add this on to our plants. So the best time to use this water soluble calcium is when your plants are in the reproduction phase. So when they're blossoming and they're starting to put on fruit, because we're gonna drench the whole plant in this and drench the roots. This is gonna uh, provide your blossoms for staying fuller longer so they can get um, pollinated and prevent that blossom and rot by adding that extra calcium. Okay, so I have already made this uh, for the video. And so all I've used is eggshells and apple cider vinegar um, but I this method this recipe is good for eggshells or bone meal now the bone meal will add the phosphorus the phosphate which is why it's called water soluble calcium phosphate so this is what you have lying around that's the great thing about this Korean natural farming is you get to use what you have um, there's no extra cost and you know truthfully most of the stuff you can purchase with food stamps if you're on food stamps because there's no reason why you shouldn't have a beautiful garden when you pull and we're poor um so let's see um i okay here is the recipe you want one part eggshells or oh that's not bone meal bone meal. Now I make my own bone meal. This is how I do it. Uh, I make stock, right? We all make stock when we butcher our chickens or our pigs or whatever. And you have those bones. Do not let them go to waste after you've made your stock. You do want to boil your bones first to get rid of the fat, the meat, any kind of um, tissue off of that. Okay. So when you, when you're done making your stock, pull the bones out, then put them in your oven and bake them. You want to cook them down so that they crumble you don't want to put them in your oven all day put them on a charcoal barbecue and barbecue those babies till they're black until they crumble okay so that's what we've done here we have put them in the oven baked them down i think this is pork bones and then we just pulverize them in a blender or a food processor um eggs are the same way after you've cracked your eggs open, I put mine on a little sheet in the oven. And you just get them until they are crunchy. Okay, so same recipe. One part eggshells or bone meal to ten parts vinegar. I'm not good at measuring, so we're just going to eyeball this. I know that with this mason jar, 
uh, if I follow these lines, there are seven lines. So I need to do a little less than that line. Uh, I don't think this is an exact science, okay? Okay, uh, I still need to get rid of more. Okay, there we go, I think that's good, okay? And then, you're gonna add your vinegar. that all around, get it all mixed up. Okay, so we got it. Now, you're going to put a breathable cover on this, like I did here. I just used a, a paper towel and I put one of the rings on, or you can use a rubber band. I felt that the ring was a better option. Uh, it wouldn't come off as easy. Okay, and then you're gonna let it sit in a cool, dark place for 10 days, okay? 10 days. And you're gonna allow that to work its magic. So I have let this sit. Now it's time to strain it. I have this um, set up. Basically that's all it. Okay, all that, I can, I'm just gonna throw the chickens or put in my compost. Or hey, you could put it in your garden still. Um, now, this is going to get diluted in water. When you're making this, um, either the calcium or the calcium phosphate, you can use this in more than just your garden. This is great to put in like your chicken's watering dishes, your animal washing watering dishes. If you have babies on your farm um, and they're growing, this is great for helping them uh, grow strong bones and skeletal systems. And so you can add the same dilution rate that I would in my garden into their watering um, pails. And so this will be great um, for your chickens for producing nice hard shells and uh, for their egg laying production. So uh, I would say if you're gonna, if you have a lot of chickens, if you have a lot of animals, you might wanna make a larger jar of this um, because we're gonna dilute this down to a one to 500 ratio. And so I'm gonna go and get the eggshells out of this real quick. Okay, let's get rid of these. My chickens will find those. And we're gonna strain it one more time just to make sure all those um, bits are out. So I'm gonna say when you use eggshells, you really wanna roast them to get rid of the um, um, membranes. So I didn't do such a great job and there is some left over in the strainer, but I don't think it's a big deal. Now you guys, this is shelf stable, okay? So you can make a big batch of this and the whole gardening season, keep this. Now when you're using that fermented plant juice to fertilize your garden, add this too. Both are great, great, great um, components for fertilizing your garden. Okay, so we're putting our paper towel on. You want, you want it breathable to let all those gases out um, while this sits in a cool, dry place for 10 days, remember, 10 days. And you can kind of see that it's, the reaction's going, they're going up and down. Um, so that's good. Now, let's go get us some water. It has been raining so much here in Kentucky. So I've been collecting rainwater. Um, I really need to get my big setup set up, but we're going to use a pump sprayer. And here is my rainwater I've been collecting. Um, and it, 
it even has a Hot Wheel on it. Let's fill her up. I have nothing but the best tools for this. Okay guys, so you want to dilute your water soluble calcium, calcium phosphate, into, I would say, preferably rainwater, but water is water. You could use bottled water from the store, you could use hose water, it don't matter. Use what you got. We're going to dilute this to a 1 to 500 ratio, okay? I did some math earlier, closest I can come up with is one tablespoon per one gallon of water. So much background noise. Okay, so we got it. Don't want to almost drip that in my coffee. Ooh, that would not be good. Okay, so my tablespoon. That's it. That's it. And that's literally like if you're gonna put this in your chicken's water or your animal's water, same ratio, one to five hundred. So if you have a gallon watering thing, put a tablespoon of this in. Now, for the fun part. We are going to douse our tomatoes. Good old pump sprayer. I think it's technically broken. Okay, so my pump sprayer is broken. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to show you what we're going to do. And you can get an idea. of. So if your pump sprayer is working properly, you'll know what to do. Now, do not do this in the middle of the day. We do not want to fry your plants. So best times is the evening um, after uh, the sun is going down or early morning because um, we don't want those water droplets on your plants to fry them and or the vinegar to do anything. So I'm pumping my pump sprayer up and now I have a tomato plant right here. Okay, so we are in the reproduction phase. I do have a nice tomato. I'm not happy about seeing this hole in my tomato. Um, but we're just going to spray this baby down. Now, here's why mine's broken. It doesn't spray. So we're just going to go like this. But if your sprayer was working properly, this would be putting out a nice little, like, missing. I can put my finger in front of it. Okay, but... You can also drench your plant, which is what I'm going to do with my broken version, okay? And we're just going to sit there and drench around the base. Okay, here are my indeterminate tomatoes. Uh, here's the trellis I made to string them. But I'm just going to come in here. So you can see I have mushrooms growing, which means I have a healthy... Uh, have a healthy ecosystem going on here makes me happy and we're just gonna drench There's some borage I believe and this is you can use this on any plants uh, that are in your garden because this is good for everybody but definitely any of your tomatoes peppers um, that would suffer from blossom and rot but definitely do your whole garden. Let me show you my peppers and my determinate tomatoes. So these are in ground, not in a raised bed. And look at how beautiful they are. I got my peppers, some basil, um, beans, squash, well, zucchini. I'm staking my zucchini this year, see how it goes. And I'm growing this weird weird plant right here. I mean, uh, it's kind of fuzzy. I'm not really sure what to do with it. But everybody is doing fantastic. Okay, so some of you might be asking, Brandy, I don't know the difference between determinate and indeterminate, okay? Determinate tomatoes will grow to a determined size. They will blossom and grow fruit all at the same time. So you can grow them, pick them, and get rid of them, and maybe grow more and do a second round. Whereas indeterminate will grow to a, a undetermined uh, size. They could be eight, 10 feet tall if you take care of them. 
And so that's why I have these on this trellis. So here's, um, I'm gonna let a few suckers grow. A lot of people pull the suckers on indeterminate because they will go straight up. And as you can see, I have staked um, the string down here and then I slowly wrap it around. There's another one. And so when they get big, let me show you how I do it. They grow some, like this guy here. I go around it like this and I just wrap it around so that it holds them straight and they will grow up. Whereas my determinate tomatoes, determinate tomatoes are what people usually use for tomato sauce or canning tomatoes. And so I'm going through, I know this has a fancy name where you run strings across and it just kind of supports them. Because I don't know if you've looked at the cost of a tomato cage, but a cheap tomato cage is like 350. So when you're growing 50 plants like I am, it's not cost effective. So I have just ran stakes every couple plants along here and I'm stringing them up as they grow up. And so like this guy needs some more support. And then I have my cucumbers on this bean hut and then the rest of the garden. I'm trying real hard to grow a lot of food this year. And while trying to do it while working full time, trying to start a new career, you guys, if you're thinking about moving to Kentucky, I am becoming Kentucky real estate agent. Hopefully in the next week or two, my license will be approved and I can help you move to Kentucky and hopefully I'll add on Tennessee. If you're interested in homesteading in Tennessee, let me know. So I'm just gonna go through now and give everybody some water soluble calcium. Keep it on your shelf and add it whenever you fertilize or whenever you think it needs it. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you guys and stay tuned for my next Korean natural farming video for pest control. Bye.